Hey y'all, welcome to the Pungo Prairie. I'm back, but I'm gonna tell you something. It's been a long, hot, hardworking summer. Building a barn, selling boats, working the garden, canning tomatoes. Sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day to get everything done that I'd like to. But I did get a whole lot of sweet messages from a whole lot of y'all. Dixon, where you been? Are you okay? When are you gonna put out another video? I wanna tell you something, I miss y'all. But I gotta confess, I did take off a day or two to go fishing with my buddy George aboard Sea Lion. Like I'm fixing to take y'all now. And when we get in, I'm gonna share some recipes on how to cook up some of those fish we caught. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this.
start showing it so far out there like that, but yeah. Yeah, 250, 300 is kind of what I'm guessing. We'll be able to get a better look at him here in a minute. Getting the second win, John, and you getting your second win too. Good job, buddy. About 30 minutes in. Give or take, maybe 20 minutes. Gotta see if I ain't getting near another rod the rest of the day.
That alarm sounds off at 2 a.m. I'm like, no way, time to get up already? I'm saying to myself, it sure didn't take long to sleep last night, but because I know potential for adventure that the day could bring, I am up and at them. My dear friend Gene always said there were only three reasons to get up this early, to go hunting or fishing or to go home. To spend the day offshore on the rip with lifelong friends and a few new ones too, Seeing their excitement when the rear clip pops and the reel starts to sing never gets old to me. George, Bruce, and I have been fishing together for 40 years, beginning back when I was the captain on George's first sport fishing boat, Tranquil. Oh, the adventures we have had. I've known Captain Ernie for even longer than that. There's nothing quite like the show performed by a white marlin as it tail walks across the water surface or a mighty blue tearing up the ocean as it greyhounds across the wave tops of that deep blue sea. And then there's the delicious meat fish like mahi-mahis, elephant tunas, and colorful toothy hard tussling wahoos like we caught today that are sure to provide many tasty meals for us and friends that are fortunate enough to share in our bounty. Most important of all are the bonds of friendship we build together and the memories of a lifetime we make with true professional guys like Captain Zerny and Matt, mates Ben and Nate, and my fishing buddies, George, Bruce, Bill, Dave, and Johnny. The only regret I have about this particular offshore adventure was just how in the world Johnny escaped the ceremonial creaking normally do any angler upon catching their first blue marlin. That was either Johnny's second big stroke of luck for the day, or we must just be getting soft in our old age. That's all I gotta say. Well, except for maybe, thanks again, George, for your gracious hospitality, and always including me for a new adventure aboard your beautiful sport fishing yacht, Sea Lion. Now, wasn't that just grand big game fishing aboard my buddy George's boat, Sea Lion, with Captains Matt and Ernie, mates Ben and Nate? Now, I'm going to tell you all something. When it comes to offshore fishing, it just don't get no better than that. Now, Captain Matt did a fine job cleaning our fish for us, filleting them out nice and pretty. But now, we're going to fine-tune trim them for the various recipes that we're going to fix up. We got our nice whole tuna loins here and we're just gonna set them right down here on this little cutting board now you see this this dark meat this dark red all that's got to come out of there so what we're gonna do I'm gonna take this little knife it kind of goes in here it's not like straight or flat along it's kind of in there at a little bit of a indentation so we're just going to start whittling it away where we don't mess up and sacrifice a whole lot 
of the meat we want to save. Flip it over here. Come right down in there like so. Need a nice sharp knife for this. I'm going to take this little tag end right here, square it off, and pieces like this that are a little bit too irregular for making sashimi or searing or blackening, I will put in a little pan with some olive oil, just bring it to a boil, and make tuna salad out of it. Put that right over here, and this little flat edge right here, I'm just going to trim that off like that, and save that for tuna salad as well. We can save these pieces we're trimming up for the kitty if you have one, or I'm going to feed them to Tally Girl. And I'm going to just barely shave off some of this ragged meat right here. See how it exposes that nice, clean flesh right there. And what you're going to end up with is a really pretty, nicely trimmed tuna loin that you can cut in blocks for making seared ahi tuna or blackening or however else you want to fix it. We're going to just set that right in the little dish here. Go on with our next one. Now we got a dish full here of our beautifully trimmed up tuna loins, including those little trimmed up pieces that we're going to boil up to make our tuna salad, including what we got trimmed up in the pan here for the kitty cat and tally girl. Now we're going on to our wahoo. Now what Captain Matt did at the cleaning table after he filleted off the whole side of that wahoo, he took and cross cut the entire fillet in about two inch sections and then again each one of those in half and what we end up with is a nice little butterfly steak and we're just going to kind of pat them down here a little bit clean off any of the rough pieces and put our nice little butterfly steaks right here in this dish like so fold them with that skin side in And now we got us a platter full of these nice little butterflied wahoo steaks to prepare for the grill. And when our wahoo fillets got down near the tail end and they weren't quite thick enough for a nice butterfly steak, Matt just trimmed them off, took off the skin, and we're going to trim these up now for our poke bowl. And all we're going to do here, see where that dark meat is? We're going to come right down this natural center line, cut that little tail end fillet off, like that right down the center and then we're just going to come at an angle a little bit of a bias cut that dark line right on out of there do the same over here with this little bit of dotted red that's left go right in our little dish with it Now these little trimmed up tail end pieces of our Wahoo are ready to cube up for our poke bowl. Save the trimmings for Tally Girl and the Kitty Cat. Now basically all we're going to do here is take our Mahi fillets. You see how they got this dark strip running down the middle? We're going to take that out. And the best way to do that is flip it over. Come right down this center line right here. Nice sharp knife. Cut it like so. Flip it over where you can see it. And again, all this dark meat in these fish kind of runs in at a little bit of an angle. And that's the way you want to cut it out of there. Cut it right on the bias, just like that. A little bit right there in the middle. Okay. And you square it off a little bit right there on the tail end. And you cut it in two or three pieces just like so it'll be ready to blacken or to fry or to just grill whatever you want to do with it 
come over here and get this belly side. Tally girl, I don't know what she's barking at out there. She got something bugging her. And then with these right here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these because it'll be easier to trim that little dark strip out of there in shorter pieces like that. Just like so. Just square it off. And now we got a beautiful platter of nicely trimmed mahi fillets to fry up or maybe blacken. Now we got our butterfly wahoo steaks ready to prepare for the grill here and our little tuna fillets and mahi mahi ready to blacken up. Now this is going to be very simple. I got a little concoction here of half and half extra virgin olive oil and melted butter, some minced up fresh garlic and some cilantro with some fresh squeezed lemon juice or if you prefer you can squeeze up a fresh lime. Now I'm going to use a little bit of lemon zest from our lemon peel here in that mixture. Not going to overdo it but just get a little bit of extra lemony flavor going on. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of sea salt or you can use kosher salt not too much right on the flesh of our little butterfly steaks like that and some fresh cracked pepper. Don't overdo it. You don't want to overpower this fish. Now I'm going to take our marinade and just spoon that right over top. A little butter and olive oil, that garlic, fresh cilantro and lemon juice. Now I'm just going to flip our little butterfly steaks over, like so. Now see, one thing I wanted to point out to you, see that skin still attached right there in the middle from when we cross cut those fillets in the beginning. That's going to help to hold these little steaks together while they're on the grill. Go on with a little salt, a little pepper on that side. On with our butter and olive oil. Okay. And we're going to put these little butterfly wahoo steaks in the ice box while we get our tuna and mahi fillets prepped for blackening. Now for our blackening season, I'm going to use some of my Pungo Prairie Pit Powder recipes at PungoPrairie.com, which I've added a little bit of extra cayenne powder to. And I'm going to take some of our seasoning and sprinkle it right on the flesh of our little tuna fillets like so. Not going to overdo it. Get the mahi. Left handed, always got my left hand in the way. A little bit more over here. Maybe just a little bit more. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want to overkill. Kind of spread it out a little bit even. And then we're going to just drizzle a little bit of this melted butter right over top. Get the mahi. And we're going to go right in the icebox with our prep tuna fillets and mahi-mahi. Now we're going to go light the grill. Now I've got our coals about where you'd like them to grill a nice steak. I put a little bit of pecan wood chips on it for a little smoke flavor. I'm going to give it a little douse in here with this cooking spray. Then on goes a wahoo. I'm just going to close that up, kill that flame, and give our little butterfly steaks about a minute and a half. Okay, we've got a minute and a half there. 
I'm going to give them a quarter turn. And get a nice crisscross of grill marks. I'm going to right here put a little bit of paprika on them to give it a little bit of color. Give them another minute and a half on that side. Okay. I'm going to give it a little another dousing of our butter and olive oil, garlic, chopped green onions, and cilantro. That around. Give them a little flip. Oh yeah. Aren't they pretty? In about another minute and a half there. Now we don't want to overcook our fish. That's important. Another little sprinkling of paprika. Like so. Spread it around a little bit. What we're shooting for is about a hundred and 45 degrees. We're 144. Let's pull it off of there. Right in our little plate. Now those a pair of pretty butterfly wahoo steaks or what? Okay, set our little butterfly steaks down right there. I've had this iron skillet going now good and hot for some time. I've got our tuna and mahi fillets that we're going to blacken up. For that congealed butter, we're going right down there in the pan, that nice hot pan. There's our mahi. Here goes our tuna. We're going to give it one minute. Okay, there's our minute. We flip them over. One minute right there. Here we go, right down on our little board. Mahi, black and mahi, black and tuna, black and mahi, black and tuna. And now, our nice little butterfly wahoo steaks. Now, is that beautiful? I'm telling you what now. Mm -mm -mm. A little extra lemon wedge. Drizzle that nice juice over those steaks. And a little bit on that nice saffron rice. A little extra garnish. A nice glass of white wine. Dear Lord, how blessed are we to venture upon your majestic deep blue sea, to harvest from the bounty of your perfectly designed and delicious creatures, such as this awesome array of mahi, yellowfin tuna, and wahoo. Thank you for such treasured friends to get to share in these adventures with. Bless this meal now to nourish our bodies and strengthen us for a life in thee. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you know I've been dying to dive into this. Look at that. Nice little piece of black and tuna. Just look at how juicy and white that mahi is. Oh yeah. The black and tuna. Mm. I'm going for some wahoo. Look at that nice flaky white meat. Oh my goodness, just that little bit of wood smoke in there, I'm going to tell you all something. Now that's some wicked good wahoo right there now, and that girls and boys is what's cooking on the Pungo Prairie. Next time we're going to do a wahoo poke bowl.